Hi, my name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln and I want to use this video to introduce what obliquity is. Now if you've come across any parameters or information about moons, planets, that sort of thing, there may be something known as obliquity. And that's what I want to use this video to explain what it actually is. Now, before we go there, if you find these videos useful and helpful and you enjoy them, then do consider becoming a member. I have lots of extra videos in the member section, which are not available publicly, and it just helps support the channel in general. So before we have a look at what obliquity is, let's first kind of revisit just orbits in general. So moons orbit planets and planets orbit stars. I mean, that's... There's a few kind of grey areas there that you can have planets that don't orbit stars, but let's just say generally a planet will orbit around a star and a moon will go around a planet. You can actually get a planet-sized moon. It becomes a moon when it's actually in orbit around a larger object or a larger planet. So we could put Earth on an orbit around Jupiter and then it would become a moon. Okay, so we're looking top down on the orbit there. They're going around like that. Now, as those moons or planets go around their planet or star, or basically as they go around on their orbit, they also spin as well. So they're kind of rotating, which we're quite familiar with, I suppose. We know we get our days and nights because we're actually rotating as we're going around the sun. We're still looking top down here. So you've got the orbit with the yellow circle there, and then you've got the spin of the moon with the green one there. Now, if we were then to move down and look edge on, it would look a bit like this. So we're looking at the orbit edge on now, and we just see this line. So if we were to watch the moon go around the Earth from this view, edge on, it would appear to move back and forth on this line. And then the rotation or the spin would be doing this as it went around on its orbit. So you've got the orbit edge on, you've also got the spin or rotation of that smaller object as well as it orbits. Now, the rotation axis and the orbital plane don't necessarily have to be kind of aligned in any way. So they can be tilted. We know that Earth's is tilted. That's what gives us our seasons. The moon is tilted. Actually, quite a lot or the majority of moons and planets and that do have some ax axial tilt. So again, we're looking edge on. That red line there is the rotation axis of the moon and it's slightly tilted. OK, so it's a relative tilt to the orbital plane. That relative tilt, your axial tilt, which is it, it goes from the line that's perpendicular to the orbital plane. So that dashed blue vertical line there is perpendicular to your orbital plane as it goes around the Earth. Again, we're using the Earth moon system here. And the obliquity is the degree of axial tilt from that line there. So if there's no tilt, then it would be zero and it would be kind of aligned to that perpendicular line from the orbital plane. Now, it's not actually fixed. So it, with regards to the Earth, we know we're tilted over by so many degrees, but that's not actually constant. And that's true for a lot of other objects. It's not fixed and it can and does change over time. So it can wander around a bit. I suppose a good way to think about it is like a spinning top. If you get a spinning top and, and spin it on the table, you'll notice that it kind of wobbles around a bit. Same thing here, the rotation axis of these larger objects is wobbling about. Now, just to give you an example of Earth's at least, the obliquity or the axial tilt, which is the green line at the top there, varies over time. It's actually one of the Blankovich cycles which can change our climate. And it results in fluctuations in the, the overall global temperature of Earth and seasons and things like that. So it does fluctuate between you know, a few degrees over long periods. There are a few other Milankovitch cycles, which I have another video for explaining anyway, but this is just to point out that obliquity can and does change over time. And we know that this happens for Earth relatively well. Now, here is the obliquity for the planets in the solar system, and you can see they're all different. Mercury is zero, it's very close to the sun, so actually it's kind of been dampened out. It's unlikely to have a high inclination there, high axial tilt, or not inclination, because that'll be the orbit. And then you've got others which are knocked over nearly 90 degrees. So Uranus is nearly 90 degrees to its orbital plane. 
very unusual there. And then obviously we've got Earth, which is fairly large, and others are kind of over between 20, 30 degrees. So what actually causes the axial tilt? Well, one of them that we're probably quite familiar with because it relates to Earth is giant collisions. So this would be collisions between two planetary sized objects. So this one here would be Uranus. Let's say this is Uranus. And it got hit by you know, a, a terrestrial sized planet and it then knocked its rotation axis off. And then the resulting planet at the end of that is knocked over quite significantly. So one of the reasons why we have this significant change in axial tilt is from giant collisions. And they happen kind of in the early formation process of the solar system or any planetary system because things are a little bit chaotic. They're not settled down. They can scatter each other. They're wandering around. So you do get encounters by planets early on before things are settled out. Another reason is that you can get perturbations and resonances with other planets and moons. So the gravitational interaction with other objects can actually knock them over. And again, I've done a separate video on this, and this is suitable for different videos anyway. But Neptune and Saturn ended up in a, in like a spin orbit resonance and it ended up knocking Saturn's rotation axis off. Also, they expect that there was an ancient moon of Saturn, which used to orbit Saturn, but it got sent inwards. And when it went inwards in the system, it kind of knocked it over again. A lot more information there, but the point is that interactions with other bodies can actually knock this tilt over as well. And it could also vary it. So over time, these resonances and perturbations can alter it. Okay. So thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or queries, then just leave them below.